Hey guys, Bob Ostrom here from BobTeachesArt.com and today we're going to be taking a look at Illustrator and the Gradient Tool. Now the other day I had a couple of students who were asking me, how do I work this Gradient Tool? They're a little confused about you know some of the things that it does and what you can do with it. So I thought I would make this video to try and help clear things up just a little bit. Uh, so let's take a look at the shapes that I have here. I'm going to start with this shape right up here and I'm going to apply a very simple gradient to that. And to do that, all I need to do is make sure that the shape is selected hop over to my toolbar, double click on my gradient tool, and then click right below that bar. And it's gonna go ahead and apply that gradient right to the shape. And you'll see that the bar down below here where we're showing the gradient is reflected over here in our shape. Now let's say that we wanted to change some of the colors down here. You can see right now I'm working with black and white. These two little boxes down here, by the way, are called color stops. So if I click on the right color stop, which is black right now, you can see that up pops this little chart right down here. And this chart is asking me, hey, what color do you want to apply to that color stop? So right now we are working with a black. So you can see I can either reduce or increase the intensity of that black. But let's say that I wanted to apply an actual color. Over here on the left hand side, you'll see swatches. So if I click on swatches, I can choose any one of these swatches and begin to apply gradients that way. So I like the blue one right here. So I'm going to stick with this guy right here. So now we have the um, blue and white gradient applied to this shape. If you look at the gradient menu over here, you can see that we have a linear gradient. So that means it's just basically going from one color to the other color. This bar right here that you're seeing in the middle of my shape is the same thing that we're seeing right down here. So this, this little uh, bar down here, this gradient slider at the bottom of my gradient tool is the same thing that we're seeing right over here. So you'll notice that there's a little diamond above that bar. If I take and I slide that towards the right or the left, you'll notice that my gradient starts to flow in the direction that I pull that. So if I want this to be a little bit more blue and a little less white, I can pull it towards the left. If I want the opposite, I'll just pull it towards the right. So that tells me how the gradient is going to work. Now let's say that I want to change the direction of this gradient. I've got this gradient going from left to right. Let's say I wanted to go right to left. I'm going to click on the uh, right hand side and I'm going to drag towards the left to redo that gradient. And you'll notice that it now reverses direction. And if that's not enough, we actually have something inside the gradient uh, panel here that'll allow me to do the exact same thing. You see this little guy right here, the reverse gradient? I'll go ahead and click on that. Does the, pretty much does the same thing. Okay, So I can also change this gradient to go any direction I want. I don't need to go from left to right. I can actually go from top to bottom, from bottom to top, from corner to corner. Okay, And you see that any direction that I drag this in is the direction that's going to apply that gradient. So if I make this, uh, this little bar a little bit shorter, notice how abrupt that gradient is. If I make it a little bit longer, see how it stretches out? I can even go as far as going past my box. And you can see I get a much more subtle gradient. I have to start up here, go down towards the bottom. See what's happening here? So this bar right here represents the gradient that's being applied to my shape. I can take this bar and I can move it. See what happens now? Okay. I can also take this little slider right in here, slide him up or slide him down. And watch what happens over here in my gradient uh, panel. When you see that little box move, you'll notice that the diamond up here also moves. So we kind of like what's going on right there. Let's make this a gradient that looks like that. So this is just a standard linear gradient. Now we also have what's called a radial gradient. I'm going to go ahead and grab this guy right over here, and I'm going to set up a gradient with him. Uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click down here. You'll notice that it applies that same gradient that was showing earlier over here. But I want to put this orange in here. So I can do, like I showed you earlier, where I can click on either one of these color stops and put an orange in there. Or what I could do is I could reach over here into my swatches panel, click and drag this over here, and drop it into uh, my gradient tool. Now. That's a pretty ugly gradient. Let's say that we want to get rid of that blue color and just leave the orange. I'm going to go ahead and grab that blue and just drag it away from that bar and you'll notice that it now disappears. So if I take this and I start to slide these around, notice how uh, if I slide the color stop, 
it also changes the way that the gradient is set up. Okay, so I have a couple of different ways that I can work with this gradient tool. I can either slide the color stops, or I can actually slide this little diamond right here. Okay, or I can take and place this uh, cursor and drag it in the direction that I want it like this. Okay, so you have a lot of different options in here. And that's one of the great things about working with Illustrator is there's a lot of redundancy built into this program. So you can do things a number of different ways. Now, as I'm looking at this, uh, this little circle here and I'm dragging the gradient, notice what's happening up here in the gradient panel. See this little guy right here, this little number right here? That reflects the angle that I'm dragging at. And you see each time I change that angle, this number right here changes. Okay, so if you want to be a little bit more precise about it, you could actually highlight this and type in a number, and then you'll, you'll notice that the gradient corresponds with the number that I've typed in right up here. All right, so that's great. Let's say we, you know, we love doing linear gradients, but let's say we wanted to make this thing look a little bit more three-dimensional. We also have the option of using a radial gradient. Okay, and in this case, what I'd probably want to do is flip this around so that we have the white highlight. So let's go ahead and do that. So that looks pretty cool. Let's zoom in on this guy just a little bit here so we can get a closer look at what's happening. Okay, so here is my little, uh, my, my slider bar here, my, my gradient bar. I can take this and I can start to move this around inside of this shape. So if we wanted to say, maybe have a light applying from the upper left, I could take that and move that up. But the really cool part about this is we're not roped into using this circular shape, we can actually start to change this shape. So if I took this and I started to drag it towards the middle, you can see that now I start to change the shape of that gradient. So this might not be the best thing for a circle, but if you're using a different size and shape, it might actually work pretty good if you're using an oval or something like that. So we can take this and we can also move this around a little bit. We can use our slider bar here okay, if we wanted to intensify that. Maybe we want to make it spread out just a little bit more. I can also take this, uh, grab this guy, and I can start to rotate that as well. So let's say that we had this as a sort of an unusual shape, and I needed that to fit in a certain direction. I can actually rotate that gradient. Okay, but I'm not really loving that. I think this is going to be a little bit better if we do something more like this, and maybe we'll take this guy and slide it up just a little bit right there. All right, so once we have that uh, positioned the way that we want it, we're just going to say Command-Shift-A or Control-Shift-A if you're working on a PC to deselect it. And you'll see there is my gradient right there. Okay. Now let's say that I wanted to apply that same gradient to this guy right over here. Well, the cool thing is that I can actually save my gradients to my swatches. So if I take this and I drag it over and just drop it in here, you'll see that that gradient is set up right there. So if I were to select this guy right here and apply that gradient, You'll see that it goes ahead and applies that same gradient to this, this guy right here. Now, of course, I'm going to have to make a couple of minor changes here by just taking this and dragging it up like I did over there. Okay, But uh, not only do, can we apply that to these two shapes, I could also apply it to this one if I wanted to. So you'll notice that this is very versatile. It's a quick way of setting up gradients, remembering what those gradients were, and then saving them to your swatches panel. Well, I hope you enjoyed this demonstration today. There's a lot more to gradients, and if you'd like to learn a little bit more about these, um, come on and join me over at bobteachesart.com. I've got some new classes coming up, and we're going to get into this stuff a little bit deeper. Okay, talk to you soon.